Welcome to today's live stream. We're gonna talk about one of the more complex prompts that we presented on the channel here. It's the mother of all prompts, all right? What it does is it takes one prompt formula and then it allows you to generate as many results as you want from it. The problem with it is it's not quite basic, right? It's like a paragraph, it has multiple parts to it. So first I wanna dive into it, dissect it, and then we're gonna use a bunch of formulas to generate way more. You might have guessed it, this is how many people generate their 1000 prompts lists. You know, they take maybe five to 10 formulas and then they generate a bunch of examples out of that. And we revealed it on the channel, I showed it to you guys, but again, it's always better to put these things into practice. We are live so we can implement any questions you guys have and let's get right into it. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a two tier setup here and you can, follow, you can follow along if you want to, okay? So basically this is what it's gonna look like. There's gonna be, I'm gonna turn this off for a second. There's gonna be, first of all, chat GPT. I have plus, so it, it should work, hopefully. It mostly does. On one side, and then I have, I, I have my mini cheat sheet, my mini ebook on the other side. You can get this thing for free if you go into the description, you sign up to the new weekly newsletter and you get this in an email for free. It's essentially a bunch of prompts um, ordered into like, just like this. And then the most important part here is you get these formulas, right? And why are these useful? These are useful because this is one level of abstraction above the prompts that you usually get. So to chat GPT, this is a little more universal. What that allows us to do is we're allowed to like understand what's going on under the hood here. And what it allows ChatGPT to do is apply a prompt like what we're gonna be doing today um, in order to generate more of these examples, all right? So look, I'm, I'm just gonna go through the motions. We're gonna open up YouTube, okay? Like this. And, and here it is, the mother of all prompts. We're gonna open up my video and we're just gonna copy paste it from the description. Perfect, pause this and right here you can get it, okay? I'll post this into chat right now so you guys can play around with it too. So copy, paste, oh, it's too long. It's too long, my apologies. Uh, we'll do it in two parts, I guess. Yeah, like this is the first part and this is the second, ugh. Okay, we're gonna do it in three parts, I guess. This is the second part, this is the third part. If you paste this together, you get the mother of all prompts and you get to follow along, all right? Next up, we're gonna open up chat GPT, okay? And I'm excited. We're gonna be doing this regularly, okay? Every single Monday at, what is it? 1 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m. Central European time. I believe that will be 10 a.m. Pacific Standard time. All right, we're gonna be doing a live stream like this, demoing some of the newest prompts that I present on the channel or even some of the older ones and just going through them, rehashing, and we're gonna be trying them in a different use cases. And when we run into problems, that's the coolest part about this. When we run into problems, we're gonna be able to face them together, okay? This is what I wanted. We're gonna be able to face them together. So with that being said, let's get into it right away. So I'm gonna move myself down here and Voila, okay, perfect. So what we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna take one of the most basic prompts here, okay? We're gonna take generate guides, okay? We're gonna take generate guides and after, um, uh, uh, I need that prompt again. We're gonna copy paste, you've heard hundreds of chat, we're gonna copy paste the prompt from the YouTube video into ChatGPT and then we're gonna replace the variables, okay? So here, here's the step by step. Step one, post this, okay? Now that we have this, all we need to do is we need to replace this last part. Okay, so I'm gonna delete the last part. Yes, you guys see this well, perfect, perfect. So actually, this is perfect. Delete this, okay? So that's step one. Again, I'm gonna show you how to generate a bunch of use cases, a bunch of examples from one prompt formula. That's what we're doing here, okay? I'm gonna take this prompt formula from my ebook here. By the way, this thing is free. You can get it from the newsletter for anybody that just tuned in. And I'm gonna post it here, okay? Doesn't matter that there's like these indentations like that, whatever. Now I'm gonna hit enter. What should happen is that it's gonna take it 
And we're gonna go through the prompt in a second, right? But it's gonna take it and it's gonna replace this subject variable with a bunch of meaningful examples, okay? Examples just like the one on the bottom right here. And if I move my camera a little bit, you're gonna be able to see, you're gonna be able to see that these examples have been initially generated like this. Then I picked my favorite ones, tweaked it a bunch, and this is what you get in the ebook, all right? But it's really about the prompt formula, as I always say, because it allows you to do this. We went from, can you provide a step-by-step -step instructions on how to subject to, can you provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to bake a cake, change a flat tire, how to program a computer? It gives you all these examples, right? And if you hit it with 10 more, it gives you 10 more, all right? So like this, you can essentially generate infinite examples. Legacy is faster. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's not too bad. Actually, yeah, I might consider that if it's a little slow. Anyway, so this is what it does. So why is this useful, right? Well, first of all, obviously, if you're trying like to create some product and you just want to sell like a thousand prompts, this is the most effective way to do it. You get, a, you get some formulas, ideally you steal them from me, as many did before, but hey, you know what, whatever, internet, it's open, we're not going to be salty about that. But the fact is, if you have a formula like this, you're going to be able to create as many prompts as you wish, okay? Now, why is this interesting? Well, as I showed you in the video, if you've seen the video, you should, if you haven't seen the video, you should probably go watch it. Pretty, pretty good video, um, a little advanced. So if, if it's like, if you're new to ChatGPT, it's probably not the place to start. Watch like the two minute tutorial first and then go to this. But essentially this gets you as many examples as you want. But the fun part begins when you start injecting or inserting prompts that have multiple variables, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna copy the core of the prompt. And we're gonna talk through it um, in a second, but I just wanted to recap the video here for everybody so you guys are up to speed. I'm gonna paste this. And if it has um, multiple val variables, I can say, of, uh, I can change this, like for example, to wedding into, I don't know, let's say German, a bunch of German and Austrian people here. And now it's gonna come up with, it should come up with phrases, right? And that's the thing, like, you never know with 100% safety that the output is gonna be just right. But here, it works, right? It picks different phrases. And this is, this is what I did with the ebook. I made sure that every single one of these prompt formulas works with a generator like this. Because it, if it works with a generator like this, you know that ChatGPT actually understands what you mean. If instead of phrase, I would just, if I would just use like a set of words or maybe sentence might not even work, I'm not sure right now, but you're gonna find if you don't have the right semantics here, AKA the right vocabulary, it's not gonna work. And if it's not gonna work with the prompt generator, it's telling you, it's implicitly telling you that ChatGPT does not actually understand what you're asking it for, okay? So all these formulas have been double, triple checked to work with this, meaning ChatGPT actually understands even the formula. And that's why I think this thing is, um, yeah, that's why I'm proud of it. Okay, so look, it did it. Can you translate I do, bridesmaids, uh, reception, wedding vows, flower girl, in the context of a wedding into German? And see, it's, it's smart. It actually took wedding related words already. Okay, so, this is the use case. Now I want to take a step back. Ooh, Marcin, thanks for the two pounds. I gotta say, Marcin, you're the first person on this channel to have ever done a, I think it's called a super chat, huh? Thank you for the two pounds, much appreciated. I've been streaming and creating content for a while, but this, is, this has never happened, I appreciate that, truly. Thanks, Marcin. Anyway, let's get to the prompt. Let's talk about it, okay? Let's dissect it a little bit, okay? For that, we're gonna full screen this and we're gonna talk about the different parts because my goal here is for you to really understand what we're doing here, okay? My goal is for you not to take away just this one prompt, but a deeper understanding of prompt engineering overall, okay? So, and I, actually I wanna make an announcement before that, an announcement, it's in the new video, I mentioned it in Discord. 
we are developing a course. Yes, it's happening because there's so much to teach and I have a almost infinite list of things, of YouTube videos that I want to create. But what I miss is like this structured approach, the step-by-step -step approach that leads you to, more, to crafting more complex prompts like this yourself. Daniel, thank you for the one euro. <laughs> Much appreciated too, man. Good to have you here. So we're crafting a course that's going to lead you from setting up ChatGPT all the way to being uh, able to craft something like this. And one of the things that we're going to teach in there, one of the first modules, so there's going to be more announcements soon, but, but essentially one of the first modules is going to be um, blocks, prompt blocks. And th that's the, there's different like words for that, but essentially it's this different part of the, of the prompt. And I need to, need to introduce this concept to you in order for you to understand um, what, what is going on under the hood here, okay? So as you can see, this is a long prompt, okay? This is not write me an essay about penguins, okay? In the style of Borat. That would be, that would be actually just two prompt blocks, okay? So write me an essay is one about penguins is like the subject, okay? But here we have multiple blocks going on. So it's, we're not just asking it to generate use cases from a chatbot prompt formula. That's the first block here, okay? We're also saying you will be turning a prompt formula like, okay? And this is the example block of it, okay? So first of all, again, we're saying now generate use cases from a chatbot prompt formula is the first part. Holy moly, 10 bucks, dude. 10 bucks, I, ap I appreciate that. $10, speechless. How would I phrase to help me generate prompts to create generated comfort based on a topic? Um, so I'm not sure. I think I should go into these questions after we go through this, right? Because now I'm going to like break the flow of the explanation. I can tell you though. Um, I, 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 will, I will answer this afterwards. Okay, speechless. I'll get back to this. Thank you so much for the donation. Um, that's very generous. And we're, we'll get to your question after I finish explaining this, okay? I, I have another, I have essentially check out five more secrets to chat GP, to writing with ChatGPT. And in there, I believe it's prompt number three that um, will show you that. Yeah, there you're gonna simulate a conversation. That's your short answer. Anyway, okay, let's get back to this. So first of all, we ask it, now generate use cases from a chatbot prompt formula. Okay, that's the first part. Secondly, we give it more precise instructions. Concretely, we're giving it exactly what we want it to do. So first of all, it's, it's like the initial prompt, but then we get more concrete on what we want from it. We explicitly tell it, you will go from this to this, okay? And ChatGPT really likes this. If you're prompt engineering and something is just like all over the place and you run the prompt 10 times and you get like eight different results, chances are, chances are you might want to make this a little more specific, okay? Thank you, Blackjack Doggy. I appreciate you. It's a cool name. So we make it more specific by telling it exactly what it should output, okay? There's no room for interpretation here, right? It's really good at inferring context. We're not going to give it that chance. We're, we're actually going to go in and do this, okay? And I know I'm repeating myself here. And I'm going to keep doing that, okay? Because I want to make this beginner friendly. I know some of you guys use some of the most advanced techniques here. I, I realize that. But I want to cater to the entire, like spectrum of knowledge when it comes to chat GPT. So I'm going to keep repeating this concept. So again, first part, we ask it for a chatbot prompt formula, for us, generate chatbot prompt formulas. Then we tell it what we expect of it precisely, okay? And then when we continue, we make, we put even more constraints on it. Always maintain the structure of the prompt formula and only replace the word in square brackets. As if it wouldn't have been clear from this part of the prompt already, we say it again. Because if you're going to run this prompt 50 times, you're going to find that sometimes it replaces other words too. And that's why this was added. So the way you have to think about these more complex prompts is it all started here. Okay? Then you run it 10 times and you figure out, hmm, sometimes it doesn't really understand what I mean by generating use cases from a chatbot prompt formula. It's quite general, right? Then we add this. We're like, hey, bro, this is going to be, like, talk to it like a person, right? 
This is going to be your input. This is going to be your output. Comprende? Okay. It's going to get better. You're going to see the results get better. But then if we go even further and we add this, always maintain the structure of the prompt formula and only replace the word in square brackets. We got very concrete, right? Maintain the structure. Don't mess with this. Don't start juggling words around. And the funny thing is sometimes you can, it's just trial and error, guys. Honestly, prompt engineering, it's a lot of trial and error. And if you add an N here, <laughs> that's the funny thing. You might have, like logically, you might think that adding this N here makes the prompt better because then, hey, like it knows that it's exactly that. But no, actually without the N, it works better in practice. Why? We can only guess, but my guess is because it realizes that, hey, it told me to only replace the words in square brackets. But then in the example he provided, he also changed this preposition, is it called? I'm not 100% sure. It's been, it's been a while since English class, but I think it's a preposition. It will correct me if I'm wrong. He changed this part of it too. Okay? And in practice, it just works better. If you're going to run this on 100 prompts, Jonathan, thanks for becoming a member. Good to have you here, man. If you run it on 100 prompts, it's just going to be better. Okay? So let's move on. So we talked about this. And then the final part of the prompt, right? Now generate a list of 10 prompts from the following formula without executing them. And then you say just four and you give it the formula. Okay? So why are we saying all this? Why? Okay, so does this make sense? Now generate a list of 10 prompts, right? That makes sense. Just, okay, give me 10, not one. If I wouldn't have included this, it just gives you like one. So I want 10. 10 is better than one in this case because we want different use cases. And But why did I add this, right? Why is it in there? From the following formula without executing them. Well, it's quite simple. If you run this, all of this is like inferred from trial and error. Again, as I say, it's not like a lot of people ask, like, how do you come up with this stuff? I probably do it 50 times more than you. I just sit here and run these for hours straight. Before I make these videos, I craft my prompts and then I run it through a bunch of formulas. This one, for example, right? Speechless. Welcome. Good to have you on board, man. Um, so so that's, what I, that's what I do, right? I just have more experience, more hours clocked in on testing different formulas. That's why I've, and that's why I'm able to come up with this. So again, we put all this together and then I run it and you're like, okay, perfect. So we tell, tell it what we want in the first block. Then we give it an exact input and output in the second block. Then we continue to restrain it even more by saying only replace the words in square brackets and always maintain the structure, right? Like don't mess with this. If we didn't, if without this, if you run it 10 times, you're going to find out uh, it starts like juggling pieces around because it thinks it's smart, which it is, but then it might not do what you want it to do. So you have to add these things. And then we go ahead, generate a list of 10 and you run the whole thing, right? With like this formula and you realize like, ah, oh, let's just try it out. Let's just try it out by showing, by doing. That's what I like to do. So from the following formula, without executing them. So if I take this part out, right? Like this is like a, why is that in there? Why, what's the point of that? You might ask. Well, if I take it out and run it, yeah, there you go. You're going to find that not always, but sometimes it's not going to generate us this like before. Oh, now it does it. It does it. It works. Okay. Actually, let's try this in a new tab. Sometimes you're going to find if you run this 10 times, 100 times, you're going to find that it actually executes the prompt too. That's why it's added in there. And in this particular case, it's fine. It's just with other prompts, sometimes that happens. And that's what you got to do. You just got to like stress test these things. You, you, like think of it like uh, the prompt is the, the, the output is like the cra the car. And no, the output is the crash test dummy. And you're doing like crash tests, I guess. And you try to break it. Like you go in there and you try to break the thing. And if you manage, good. You just found out what went wrong. Now fix that. Okay. And... Yeah, so I'm actually a little surprised here that it didn't execute the prompts. But as I said, in other examples, we're, we're going we're gonna to put in a little effort here to break this, right? We're going to use this prompt without the, I'll generate a list of 10 prompts, without this exception. Um, and we're going to try to show you what I mean here. We're going to give it like two tries. I'm not going to be trying forever. But if you don't add that thing, sometimes it just 
executes the prompt and gives you the answer to it. I don't like, that's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking for these things that I can copy paste into Excel sheet, right? Um, okay. Um, gonna go over here run a new chat. So I'm gonna, I'm trying to break it now. It doesn't work again. All right, all right. But I mean, I guess you get my point. Um, we would have to run this like a lot of times in order to get what we want here. But my whole point is trial and error, guys. That's the way this works, okay? You're not gonna, you're not gonna figure out how to craft advanced prompt by running it like two times. If you're, if you have prompts that you use for your work and for your productivity, and you haven't stress tested them at least like five times with like adding and taking away different things. You haven't even tried. Um, that's that's just a fact. Like every single one of these until they arrived in the form that I present them in like the mini book and the ebook, they've been tested multiple times. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it doesn't do it here, but okay. But that was, okay, I think you get my point here, right? If I take away parts of this, it's just going to go all over the place. For example, if I take out always maintain the structure, I mean, we could simplify it even more, I guess, right? We could just paste this part, and then we can take this part. And now we're leaving out the maintain the structure. Okay, new chat. Doesn't want to do it twice. And this is essentially it. You like, it's puzzle pieces and you piece them together. And what you gotta do is you gotta realize what kind of puzzle pieces work. You gotta realize what kind of puzzle pieces work. You gotta realize there is puzzle pieces and then you gotta experiment a bunch or you get a source from, or you get like a document like this where somebody experimented a bunch for you. So yeah, it actually, even without it works quite well. But what I'm saying is like, yeah, if you take some of these prompts that are like, I don't know, a longer paragraph, um, you're gonna run into problems if you take away certain or take away certain blocks, right? Okay. Any questions so far? I think that was pretty clear. Any questions so far? So let's look at the chat here briefly, and then let's keep going and let's expand on the idea generation part of this prompt. Um, yes. Uh, what would be the result if you would have ChatGPT jailbroken? That is a good question. Um, I think in this case, because we're so specific, it wouldn't be very different, right? I think in this case, it would just give you a bunch of examples. Maybe the examples would be a little more out there. That would be my guess. Um, and I heard there's there's a version of Dan floating around again, right? I heard that on, on Twitter. I'm not sure, I haven't tested it in the recent days. I know they shut it down after, the, um, like, a, like a day or two after the, last live stream we did. Uh, yeah, if I give you a prompt, will you use it? It depends on the prompt, man. Go ahead and try. Um, but yeah, essentially I wanna get through this content here and then we're gonna get to all this. But hey, speechless, Jonathan, thanks for joining. Uh, good to have you on board. You can now, you can go to Discord, you can connect your Discord account to your YouTube account and you'll have access to the members only room now. It's great. Um, okay, so, this is, this is the basic thing. So a lot of people were confused by this. I hope this step-by-step -step explanation helped a little bit. Now we're gonna go a step further, okay? So we're gonna take the basic prompt. Well, basic, it's not so basic, but we're gonna take this, right? I'm gonna go into a new chat. I'm gonna paste this, all right? And then we're gonna take, we're gonna find the example here. Oh, this is perfect. It has five variables, right? Nice, and, and now, phew, Wait, 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 wait. This right here. And now, you know, there's a bunch to this. There's a bunch to this. So it's gonna be predicting multiple variables and this is where it starts to break apart. So maybe this is what I should have shown and, and how to break it because if you start making it shorter here, you know, like if I take out this, uh, I think it's gonna, it's gonna mess up now. There you go. Because if you have multiple variables, it's gonna start being confused. Um, that's why that's why parts of it are in there. It actually works pretty well. 
Well, anyway, okay, let's move on here. Let's move on here. So essentially, we're going to take the core prompt that you can get from the chat or from the YouTube video in the description here, okay? We're going to open up a new chat. We're going to post this, okay? And if I take this multivariable formula for, well, this is like the first one in the writing chapter. So it's essentially writing anything, okay? With this, you can out write anything. So let's say you're new to ChatGPT, okay? Let's say you're completely new and you're like, okay, I don't even know what prompts I want to do. I don't even know what, what it can write. I don't even know, where, where do I even begin, right? I saw Igor's two-minute video on how to set up an account and how to run, like, write me an essay. Okay, I did that, but where do I go from there? Well, if you go straight to this more advanced prompt and you actually listen closely to this stream, you're going to realize that you're going to realize that uh, you can use this setup as an idea generator, okay? What I mean by that is let's let's full screen let's full screen this for a second here. Okay. You can use this mother of all prompts, as I call it, as an idea generator. Why is that? Because essentially we're telling ChatGPT to be creative and to come up with more. Okay? Come up with more replacements for the words in square bracket. Now, what happens if we leave it like this? It's going to go in. It's going to look at this, like, okay, not replacing, not replacing, not replacing. Ah, square brackets. Oh, wait, wait, I need to move my camera a little bit. There you go. Once it arrives here, it's going to realize, ah, he told me only replace the word in square brackets. Here was the example, like this, from this to this. Okay, time to replace this. And it's going to start getting creative. And it's going to start giving you various examples. Now, what is that if that's not an idea generator? It's giving you different examples that are relevant. And what you're going to find is if we just run this, it actually maintains the context. And now, why is this so great? Because if you run it on a prompt with multiple variables, just like this one, right? We have one, two, three, four, five variables, okay? It's going to start inventing different substitutions for those variables okay so let's look at the first one can you write a blog post for the new restaurant in downtown los angeles outlining the benefits offered by their locally sourced ingredients and this what we just did here we generated 10 examples of what chat gpt can do for you all you need is a good formula okay here's another example can you write a product review for the new fitness tracker on the market outlining the benefits offered by its advanced features. It's going to start generating like product ideas that you could start coming up with. Okay, can you write a white paper for the solar energy company in San Francisco, outlining the benefits offered by their innovative technology? Can you write a case study for the healthcare? And you can see if we just look at this case study, white paper, product review, blog post, press release. This is all stuff it can write. How to guide research paper. You could use all these in whatever other prompt you are crafting. That's why this is so valuable, okay? Yeah, I cover some of the text on top right. That's, it's fine. I mean, I guess I could go over here. Yeah, less intrusive. Okay, all right. Thanks for the comment. Can you write a social media post, right? A video script, all of these things it can write. And that is just for the variable of type of text. Then it gives you different subjects, it gives you different locations, different benefits. So if I look at this, outlining the benefits, outlining the benefits, outlining the benefits. So actually, here we ran into a problem. It did not replace the benefits variable, ladies and gentlemen. Right? You see this? It replaced the type of text, right? As we saw, blog post, product review, white paper. It replaced the location, downtown LA, um, in San Francisco, here it didn't replace the location, but mostly did it, right? In New York City, in Austin, sticks to the US here, well, mostly Bali, Detroit. 
Okay, but it did not replace this part, outlining the benefits. Now, what do we do? What do we do? Any guesses? Any guesses? What do we do if it doesn't correspond to what we asked it for? What do we do? Well, it's actually quite simple. We ask again, okay? Just like with a person sitting next to you. Like imagine I'm out here, there's like my homeboy, Dan, let's call him, you know? And I ask Dan like, okay, you know, what type of text could we start writing? And Dan is gonna be like, I don't know, look, I'm gonna modulate my voice to make this more clear here. <laughs> Maybe Dan has a voice like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna ask like, okay, Dan, like what types of text like could we write? Let's just, just forget about AI, forget about all of this for a second, okay? Dan, what types of text could we create? And Dan is gonna be like... Uh, maybe we could write an essay. Maybe we could write an email. Maybe we could write a white paper, I guess. And I'm gonna be like, cool, thanks Dan. So we have three ideas right there, okay? We have the white paper, we have the essay and the email. That's great. But what if I ask Dan, like, Dan, what ideas, like, what type of text could we generate? And then Dan goes ahead and Dan is like, I mean, we could do this. and then Dan answers like, Oh, um, we could generate some text, but I'm kind of hungry right now and whatever, let me look at my phone. What would you reply? You wouldn't be like, oh, you, you, whatever, you know, it's, if it's an important task, it would be like, Dan, please. Can you give me some types of text we can generate here? Can you work with me? And then it would be like, ah, all, all right, you know, like, okay. I'm gonna put the phone down, let's do this. Okay. You would ask, that is my point here. You would ask Dan, you would actually talk to him like a human being, right? And it's the same thing that applies with this AI thing, okay? You just talk to it. So if it did not give us the benefits, it always just went ahead and said benefits, 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 benefits. It's not actually giving us some benefits. I haven't tested this out, okay? We're doing this all live, but what I would always do is simply say, you forgot to replace the benefits. Try again. Or maybe I can be even more specific with different use cases or maybe i'll say examples what do we use in the original prompt i think it's use cases generate use cases try again okay and i'm just gonna run this so just like i talked to dan i'm gonna talk to ChatGPT here and tell it hey you forgot try again like it's no big deal look this thing it just does it and now it should go ahead and replace the benefits. And it doesn't. And it doesn't. So what do you do if Dan still refuses to do it after you talk to him, after you pointed out, hey man, could you please concentrate? Could you please do this again? You're gonna ask him again, but differently. Okay? So this was the basic approach. And I'll tell you from experience, eight out of 10 times, this is gonna fix it. And all of a sudden it's gonna do exactly what you want it to do. It's gonna replace the benefits. Now we're gonna ask differently, just like in real life, we're gonna get a little more strict here, okay? So if Dan, if you asked him like to put the phone away for the fifth time, you're gonna have a little bit more of a strict tone and you're gonna be a little more clear on what you want than the first time. Same thing here, all right? So let's let's just do this. We're live, we're gonna get through this and we're gonna get it to do what we want forcefully. Exactly, you're gonna be more forcefully. So <laughs> I'm not sure if writing in caps would do it, but essentially um, we're gonna expand this prompt, okay? We're gonna say, you forgot to replace the benefits with different use cases, try again, and we're gonna add to it. And what do we add? Just like I told you, we're gonna add another prompt block. And again, in the course, we're gonna go into this like step by step, but just take my word for it. 
one of the best things you can do is add like a input and output examples like this. So we're gonna go, go ahead and say, you forgot to replace the benefits with different use cases. And then we're gonna say, for example, you should have replaced benefits with, and we're gonna follow the structure here, so. Um, we're gonna use one of the examples here. Like this, can you replace around your recovery? Lining the benefits with, and then we're gonna copy it again. And we're gonna give it the output example. Okay, can you uh, refer new eco friendly hotel in Honolulu? Outlining the incredible sea view and the complement spa offered by their su sustainable practices and carbon neutral food footprint. Okay. And we'll say now try again. Okay. So again, we got more specific. Exactly. So we're giving it an example. Okay. So we did the same thing as with the original prompt. So you can just follow up with something simple and most of the times it's going to do the trick. But let's see if this works. It's definitely, we became a little more precise. I'm sorry about the mistake. So let's hope it gets it done now. Outlining the benefits offered with varied benefits. Okay, incredible CV and complimentary spa, perfect. Outlining the benefits offered by the streamed line and it didn't work. It didn't work. We gave it our best so far. It still didn't work. And look, am I a little bummed out that this didn't work on a second attempt? Of course, but that's the reality of this. That's the reality. If you want to use this and you want to use this at a slightly advanced level, you're not going to always get the results you want in a few seconds, all right? So we're going to keep trying here until we crack this. We're going to keep trying. Outlining the benefits. Let's just try simply. You forgot to replace the be benefits benefits in examples 2 to 10 again. Please replace them with custom benefits for the according um, example. I'm going to just follow up concretely. Like, hey, you apologized. You told me you forgot to replace and we're, we're, again, we're specific, right? He forgot in 2 to 10. He didn't forget in number 1. Sometimes it just takes a little more effort like this, okay? It's just the nature of the beast right now. Let's see if this works. Perhaps change the position of benefits in your prompt. I could do that too. That's a good suggestion. That's a good suggestion. That's a good suggestion. And I think we're forced to do that right now. Thanks, ma mail care. Oh my God, I just tried the prompt generator command in OpenAI, holy shit. <laughs> All right, so it still doesn't do it, huh? So let's do this, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like fixing bugs in code. Exactly, exactly right. You just try over and over again until it finally works. And we're here doing it live, okay? So look, usually I would just go forever and keep trying, but I think there is an argument to be made it's that the stream would be more informative and entertaining if I don't just spend like the next half an hour doing this. So we'll give it a few more tries. I think what Mailcare sa said here makes a lot of sense. Uh, we can shift the original formula. I think I'm going to give it like two more tries and then I'm going to shift it because I want to make it work with the original formula, right? That's the point here. But as you can see, it doesn't... Um, so it changed the other variables. I think, I think at some core level with this one concrete prompt, if I'm seeing this, it has a really hard time replacing this. Because in the sentence structure, 
outlining the benefits offered by their ethical and sustainable fashion practices. And okay, here's another trick. Here's another trick. So, so I can ask it. Why are you not replacing the benefits part of the formula? You can always ask. That's another key takeaway here, right? I mean, some of this stuff seems obvious, but honestly, I think there's value in communicating this. I apologize for the for confusion. I misunderstood your previous request. To address your concern, I will replace the benefits parts of the formula with custom benefits for each example. So it, it gets it. It says. And that this made it work. This made it work, ChatGPT. You did it. Perfect. Look at that. Outlining the positive impact on their community, blah, blah, blah. Outlining the energy cost savings. The benefits. It replaced the benefits. We did it. So see, first we got, we told it, hey, let's rehash, let's recap here, okay? We told it, hey, this is not what I'm looking for, bro. <laughs> we told it, you forgot to replace the benefits with different use cases. Try again. It didn't do it. Okay, then we went ahead and we told it, okay, you forgot to replace the benefits with different use cases. For example, you should have replaced this with this. It did not do it. Then I told it concretely, you forgot to replace the benefits in examples two to 10 again, please replace. Okay, I told it, okay, I understand, my bad, here, here you go, and it didn't do it again. And sometimes, if you're going in this one route, you just got to switch up your approach. This is the lesson here. That's the underlying lesson. Okay? So, all of a sudden, we didn't tell it to do this, do that. As with humans, actually, there's so many, like, parallels with psychology, right? It doesn't usually work if you tell a person, do this, do that. But sometimes it's, it's better to open up with a question or with a suggestion. Just like here, we took the opposite route. We went from, hey, no man, you're doing that wrong. You should be doing it like this. Instead of saying that, we went ahead and we were like, why are you not replacing the benefits part of the formula? And we cracked the code and we made it work. And this is what it looks like, right? This is prompt engineering at its core. If you, if you wondered, it's, it's this, you sit here, you type into your keyboard all day and you make these different use cases work. What did we learn here, okay? So if you're trying to generate examples or ideas from a formula with five, this is like one of the more complex ones, right? I mean, sure, you could like make it as complex as you want, but essentially, if you have five variables, you're gonna run into troubles, right? If you just go ahead and say, can you write a type of text? It's just gonna work right away and it's done. But the more complex and advanced you get, the more troubles you're going to run into. And once you're at that point, you need solutions to those problems, okay? And I, I hope you learned something here. Like, just keep trying, keep going. And if it doesn't work, don't keep beating your head against the wall. Try a different approach. Try a different approach. You know, maybe another another good one would be uh, the mail care um, example here. Just change the formula, you know? Move the benefits to different parts, right? That would work too. We could totally say, can you write a type of text for the subject in location offered by the subject and outline the benefits, right? That would totally work. It would probably get the job done. But I just wanted to show you a different approach to problem solving this. All right, so again, you're just gonna need to try different approaches. And I'm glad we get to do this live, guys. Honestly, like this was, I think there's a good lesson here and I'm, and I'm, I'm glad we got to uh, run into this problem and solve it. So yeah, essentially, this is it. One more thing I wanted to communicate and then we get into the Q&A. And that is, um, this is a fantastic idea generator. There's various approaches here. Okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna discuss those at some point, but essentially, if you take this prompt and you wanna use it to generate ideas, all you do is you um, specify, let's say the location. So let's say we do Vienna here um, and we wanna do maybe emails. Can you write an email for the subject um, in Vienna? Um, 
for the, I don't know. Or like, let's do for the, whatever, for the opera in Vienna, outlining the benefits offered. Offered by the, um, let's say by the venue, right? By the location. And now if you do this, it's not going to go crazy on all of these variables. It's only going to alter the benefits. <laughs> let's run this. Let's see if this, if it doesn't work, we're not going to bother with it. I showed you how to problem solve it. We would go ahead and probably ask the question, why did you like, as this works with this example, but outlining the safety measures. See, and here it puts it into square brackets. So again, another problem. This is probably not what you want. I like the answers. It actually works here, upcoming performances, but I don't want the square brackets. Now, what do what would you do? What did we learn? You talk to it just like you would talk to your friend sitting next to you, right? <laughs> Vina, Gemma, yes. <laughs> oh man, I love that this is so international. There's like there's like Brazilian people that have no idea what a. <laughs> no, they probably know what a Vina Schnitzel is, but <laughs> anyway. So, what do we do here? What do we do here? Okay, how do we fix this? We say, please, no, we, we actually don't have to be polite. I'm just like naturally polite. So you don't have to say please, okay? It's just somebody was joking that our, like the AGIs that are going to emerge one day are going to like be nicer to you if you, if you asked ChatGPT, if you, if you um, led with please. <laughs> anyway, so what I'm going to do is say, um, why, or, or like now, Give me those answers. There's so many ways to do this. Answers without square brackets. So that would be one. The second one would be, why did you include square brackets? Please try again, would work too. And there you go. Outlining the safety measures implemented by the venue. There you go. With no square brackets, they're gone, right? So yeah. Kevin takes uh, benefits out of the brackets. Yeah, that's an, well, the whole point of this is, is like replacing the parts in brackets with something else. So, and this is how it works. You just got to follow up. And does having a better command of English help? Absolutely. Can you cheat by having something like this on you and actually just copy pasting all of these formulas? Absolutely. Whatever your English level is, if, if you have a bunch of these prompt formulas, you can run this as many times as you want. And look, the coolest thing is, and I keep saying this, I know I'm like a broken record, but hey, if you, even, even in this free version with like, like the full version has like four times as much content. So here we have like 25 prompt formulas and over a hundred examples, even with the prompt uh, free version. If you go ahead and you try this mother of all prompts on each one of these, or you start messing around with these, and like the simplest way to do it is just like you copy paste one of the examples, boom, and you look at the results. If you're gonna go ahead and if you're gonna run like 50 of these 100 prompts, and you're gonna, if you're a total newcomer, you're gonna start understanding what questions generate what answers. And that is gonna ultimately enhance, and that is the end goal here. It's gonna advance your ability to ask questions. And as you know, this whole application is only as good as your questions. So again, you can get this free resource. Just go to the link in the description. You get this free ebook, sign up to the weekly newsletter. Um, and yeah, that's it. If you want, you can buy the full version that has four times as much content. But essentially, what I would recommend to every newcomer is get the, get the basics and then take a bunch of these examples and run them and then learn from that. Now. Is there better ways to learn this? Sure. And that's why I'm creating the course, right? It's going to be like a step-by-step -step holding your hand. We're going to learn about blocks. We're going to learn about formulas. We're going to learn about exceptions. We're going to learn about, about more advanced topics, like certain tricks where you can like play it against each other and even more stuff that we didn't even talk about here yet, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be done in a, uh, approximately a month. I've been working on it since the end of December. But... Essentially, if you want to get your feet wet and if you ever start using this, there's no better way than just trying it out. Okay. So again, let's recapitulate and then let's get into the Q&A. So we learned 
that you can use the mother of all prompts to use prompt formulas to generate a bunch of examples. Then we did it. We showed you how to do it, okay? Copy it, you use the prompt, you get a bunch of examples. We showed you how to troubleshoot it, okay? We ran into this issue. It didn't want to replace the benefits part because it had like five, it had five different uh, variables and it didn't want to replace one of them. What do we do if we run into problems? We don't give up. We keep going and we keep looking for new approaches, okay? That's the takeaway here. If, if you tell it like, try again, it's not working, blah, 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 pick a different approach. Go with a question and all of a sudden you're going to fix the issue, okay? So this was kind of like a mini masterclass on like troubleshooting. Fantastic, love it, good, good content. This is, I'm glad we get, got to cover this. All you guys in here just, I hope you learned something. And then again, if we have this, you can use it as an idea generator. You can simply only like replace four out of the five things and then it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna come up with different benefits. And the coolest thing, and this is what I try to get to with like the ebook and all the blah, blah. The coolest thing is if you do enough of these, you're gonna be able to come up with your own prompts. You're gonna be able to come up with your own prompt formulas. I really need you to start thinking in prompt formulas, okay? Because this is what this is closer to what ChatGPT sees than this. That's the key takeaway here, okay? So if you're gonna have your own prompt formulas, you can run it through the mother of all prompts. You're gonna, you're gonna be able to generate as many examples, as many, and I always say examples, but let's take a practical approach. You're gonna be able to generate as many product benefits as you want. If you fill this out with your stuff, can you write me a product description for the for like a smartwatch, um, whatever, maybe you delete this part. Outlining the benefits, you leave this like this, offered by the smartwatch. It's gonna go ahead and it's gonna list a bunch of benefits that a smartwatch can have. What a great way to explore a product category, right? Just do that. So that's what I'm saying. And if you do this often enough, and if you try it often enough, you're gonna learn how this works and you're gonna learn the underlying themes. So that'll be it, that'll be it. Mother of all prompts, fully demoed. We ran into problems, we solved them. I showed you the idea generation part two. I hope this clarified some questions because a bunch of comments on there were like, hey, you mean this is kind of, this is kind of tricky. Um, mail care, I just noticed the 100 case uh, ebook didn't arrive after about 20 minutes, not in my spam folder either. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, give it another 40 minutes. I can manually send it to you, no problem, but there is some issue with my e-commerce platform where in about 20% of the cases, the email just doesn't arrive. And I texted them, I'm in touch with them. If, it's not if this is not gonna be resolved in the next week or two, I'm gonna switch to a different email provider. Uh, there's some issue, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what to do. I set this all up myself, um, made all these video myself, videos myself, creating all this content myself. Now I'm starting to get helped, um, by editor and a social media manager now, but essentially, yeah, it's just the e-commerce platform I'm used. I, I apologize for, the, for your troubles. If it doesn't arrive in 40 minutes, um, just shoot me an email under igor at myaiadvantage.com and I'm gonna send it myself instantly. Okay, so that's it, we got it. So that was the mother of all prompts now. I have you guys here, hanging out, chilling, learning about ChatGPT. I mean, come on, think about this. We're from all over the world, but we share something in common. And that is the fact that we all enjoy messing around with this, or we all have a use case for this. Few, few people understand and few people actually use this. I'm still shocked on a daily basis how little people still, like still now, end of February, use this. We have a bunch of we have a bunch of like-minded individuals in here. So, what we get to do now is we get to hang out a little bit, play a little music, maybe look at some content, maybe test out some of your ideas, maybe test out some of your prompts. We're gonna do a, do a quick, uh, quick Q and A, and as I promised earlier, I'm gonna scroll way up in the chat, and we're gonna look at some of these questions one by one. Okay, so here we go. Good to have you guys here. Thank you so much. Honestly. I've been blabbering for about an hour, but I hope you guys get some value from this. Let's see. Does the normal chat GPT work currently? Uh, I'm not sure because I'm on the um, 
usually um, the times that I found to use, but maybe changed now because I, I got a plus instantly, obviously. Uh, the times that used to work um, are kind of the lunch hours in Europe, which is, I guess, night time in the US. So that's kind of your best bet. That was, that was like my go-to time for content production. That would be my tip. So like six to eight hours ago, that's kind of the sweet spot for the free version of ChatGPT. Just my personal experience. Um, how do you get legacy speechless asked? Um, I think if you have, if you have, I'm not sure if it's in normal, but in the, if you have plus, you can switch here. Yeah. And now if you run some of these prompts, it's usually faster. Yeah. So if we go to legacy, you're going to see it runs it faster. There you go. Blazing fast. There you go. Speechless. I'm new here. ChatGPT is still crashing in Chrome. Safari works for me now. Interesting. I never ran into problems with Chrome. I always use Chrome. Interesting. Um, yeah, a little more background music about that. But this one is a little too hype. This is, this is about right. Let's see. More questions. More questions. By the way, hit me up with your questions. We're going to do a little Q&A here. So, you know, I'm, I'm going top to bottom, though. Is this live uh, going to be available later on? Absolutely. All of this is being recorded. And what I'll do, as with every live, I'll cut out the first like eight minutes. It takes like 24 hours process, but I'm going to cut out the first eight minutes. And it's going to be a standalone video, a long video, a one hour long video, but it's going to be available as a video. So whenever you miss these, you can always catch up. Honestly, I just, I just love live streams. I like watching live streams. Personally, for me, I, I just love watching gaming live streams. I, I don't know why. It's like the type of thing that like my my parents don't understand. Um, I don't know. I'm 29, by the way, in, in a week. Cheers. It's the type of thing like that my parents don't understand, but I just love gaming live streams. There, it's just It just hits different to watch something live. So I appreciate you guys being here. By the way, go check out the Discord server. Hey, shout out Discord server um, in the description. If you become a YouTube member, you get a special role. You become a YouTube member role in the Discord and you get access to a private chat room where essentially you kind of have like all the other members, all the other like devote, most devoted like chat GPT enthusiasts. And um, I, yeah, I guess me and the AI Advantage team hang out there and you get like priority support too. And you get a cool badge on here, so, you know, become a member. That's good. It's really not about the money. I think it's, like, three ninety nine a month, of which I get, like, half. It's more about, like, that, like, members club, you know? Would I'd love to have you guys there. And, yeah, Speechless, thanks for joining, talking about that. Let's answer your question. So, thanks for the donation, man. That's, like, the biggest donation I ever received. It's actually 10 bucks solid, man. Thank you so much. How would I phrase it to help me generate prompts to create generated conversations based on a topic. So you would need to come up with some prompt that essentially generates conversations around the topic, right? So let's just engine, quickly engineer this for you here, man. You you did a nice donation, so we can, we can do this live. Let's go ahead here. Happy 28th birthday. <laughs> thanks, Fenris. Thanks, man. Thanks. Um, so essentially you would want a prompt that um, generates a conversation. As I said, you can go to five more secrets to chat GP to writing with chat GPT. That's the title of the video. And I think prompt number three in there, which you can also copy paste from the description, essentially simulates a conversation. We're just going to do that. You know what? That's, that's simpler than like engineering the prompt on the spot here. Um, we're going to do five more secrets to chat GPT. Mwah. Nah, not that. Nah, that this, is, this is it. Yeah, I know. I, I overused this thumbnail a little bit. Whatever, it works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> okay, so um, it's this one. Simulate a high-level interview for a chief copywriter by asking questions as if you are a potential employer. In this scenario, I am taking the role of the employee and you ask increasingly hard questions to screen my competence but only after I respond. Start by introducing yourself. So here you simulate an interview and you can also use this to simulate a conversation. And if you wanted to, to answer a question, 
how would I phrase it to help me generate prompts? Um, you would go ahead and you would start replacing parts of this with formulas, with like with variables. That's what I'm trying to say. So generate a high level of interview for a chief copywriter by asking questions as if you're a potential em employer. Um, so you could say um, you want to generate You get prompts to generate based on a topic. So you could like put your topic in here uh, employer. You could say I'm an employer for for Apple. You know, you put your topic in here or you could replace like your employer. You could just be like a conversational partner, you know, you replace that. And then like this, you can simulate the conversation. And to use it for the mother of mother of all prompts, you essentially go in here. Um, yeah, actually, this is like not the perfect prompt to answer your question, but this is a really good one. This is like one of the best ones to play around. Um, yeah, it, I don't know, man. Essentially, this this is hard life. Like coming up with prompts live is is not easy for sure. But let me try one more time, and then we'll move on. How would I phrase it to help me generate prompts? based on a topic. So so maybe you would say simulate a conversation on climate change, right? Yeah, and then you could you could like does this answer a question? I think you could take this and you could replace climate change with like topic and then you paste the mother of all prompts before this. <laughs> that name man by the way, the mother of all prompts. I don't know, it works. It it makes sense. At least it seems to make sense to me and you guys too. And then you paste this into the mother all prompts. I think that should answer your question. And then you're going to get a bunch of like topics uh, that you can generate conversations around. And then you could always go ahead. Um, and if you, this is one thing that I forgot to show you. If you, if you take this, um, you can always go ahead and uh, generate, uh, I don't know, questions around, uh, oh no. topic you could always go ahead and take okay this is a long-winded answer but hey this man made a donation we appreciate him we're gonna try to answer his question to the best to the best of our ability is that what you say i guess Ugh, it doesn't want to work now huh? still processing the last question anyway i'm getting a little caught up on this thing so we're gonna move on but essentially, if you run this, it's going to give you a, ba a bunch of like examples, right? As expected, climate change, effective leadership, healthy eating habits. And now you can, yeah, this is what I want to show you. You can always go ahead and say, um, now run number two, right? Oh, come on, man. There's no other responses. Why, why is it messing up? Essentially, if you tell it now run number two, it's just going to run this as if you copy pasted this into a new, it's going to give you this output. It's going to give you this output. And as this is a question generator, it's just kind of a loop. But I, I hope that answered your question speechless. Um, you essentially find the prompt that works for you. You replace parts of it with variables, and then you run it through the matter of all prompts. That's Then you can multiply it. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. All right, different music. Let's go. And we had this one. This is a good one. This is a chill one. Okay. Have you tried this with the Dan method and compared the results? That's a good question. I actually haven't. Back when I used to play with the Dan method, I tried a bunch of like my mind went instantly towards like the controversial stuff and kind of the, the tricky stuff. It would be interesting to see. I think it's a good suggestion. I would like to see that. Blackjack doggy. Oh no, we lost him. He had to go back to work. Sorry for that. You can always rewatch this. That's the thing. Okay, more questions. More questions. Keep them coming. Is Dan or alternative to Dan still viable? I'm not sure right now. I caught something on Twitter today and yesterday that it's still available. That there's apparently there's a new version. So I think if you search hard enough, you might be able to make it work. But that's not the topic of today's stream. Do you know the cost of living in Swiss? Yeah, absolutely. It's like um. Uh, 2.5x of the cost of living in Austria and something like like 4x or 5x cost of living in Slovakia. That's just like 
you know, just my estimations, but yeah, that's what it is. After outputs, there is a button repeat. Yes, if you give a prompt, will you use it? Okay, let's see. <laughs> let's see. Um, okay, should cover right here. I like it. Yeah, it's a good prompt. It's a good prompt. So what what um, you're outlining here is probably the best way to generate prompts inside of ChatGPT. But if you ever try this, you're going to realize it only does so much. So yeah, this is, a, this is a good prompt right here. So imagine you're creating a writing prompt generator using ChatGPT. This is from the original GitHub, right? Uh, the one where like act as a prompt generator, act as a psychologist, all that, right? The original thread from back in December. Write a series of uh, thread, the repository. Write a series of prompts that will help users generate unique and creative writing ideas. Your prompt should cover a variety of genres and themes. Da, 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 da. So it's essentially going to give you like writing prompts. Yeah. So this is like one of the best ways to generate prompts inside of ChatGPT. But it doesn't, it's not omnipotent. Yeah, this is, a, this is a fantastic prompt. So I'll try and post this one into chat. Oh yeah, it's actually in chat. You can just go up, scroll up and take this one. The problem, the problem here is this, like this, it gives you more than you can handle. Like what I did with the ebook, for example, is yes, some of this, you can find, you can discover some of the prompts from the ebook like this absolutely like you, you write you change up different parts of this but the problems is the problem is not all of these are are practical that's what i would say um a big thing that i did is i filtered out all the ones that seemed useless but you could also go ahead and do this it's a fantastic prompt and look i'm all about like openness and transparency like i could have totally done a version of the stream or a version of the channel where i just you know don't tell you a lot of the things as they are. I could have, like, even this video looked like, it's like, hey, man, like, look, you can get a formula and you can get, like, a hundred examples from that formula. That's this whole stream, right? That's essentially revealing the secret of, of how all these people sell, like, a list of 2,000 formulas and run Google ads on it or, like, Facebook ads on it, right? But I choose to be transparent. I choose to give you all the info. And there's always more. There's always more, you know, that's that's the beauty of this. There's always more, and we're going to keep exploring this. But yeah, this is pretty good. Look at this prompt. Write a personal essay about a challenge you faced and how you overcame it. What did you learn from this experience, and how has it happened to you as a person? I mean, this is interesting stuff. It's just not like, this is not... I would end with this. These prompts that are generated here are not as close to reality as some of the stuff I choose to cover in my content. I, I, I choose to cover the stuff that is like, you know, boots on the ground. You can take it, take the prompt, prompt formula from the description and you run with it. That's it. I like to pick things that are very practical, right? So if you look at the ebook, all the stuff in here is, is like stuff that you can start using now, you know, boom, email subjects, you know, write to email subjects. Perfect, you can use that in like the next 10 minutes probably. Profiles, write social media profiles. It's like a list of good ideas. Okay, raps. <laughs> okay, I, I take it back. Maybe not raps. But this is a, it's a funny one. Social media captions, extremely convenient, right? Everybody, most people deal with social media and with captions. Like you can use it right away. Writes you messages. It writes you, it re reveals cultural values. Like this is stuff, if you have like coworkers from different cultures, you can run this on their ethnicity and you can learn more about them. This is like... It's extremely practical stuff. That's kind of the filter that I have in my head for picking these. Anyway, it's a good prompt. Thank you for contributing. Uh, I don't want to read your name because it's a little, it's a little out there, you know. Okay, all right. Let's move on. Let's move on. We have a lot to cover here. Write it in caps. Yes, yes, yes. Um. Okay. Let's get to the new questions here. There's also this like dramatic music, which, wait, <laughs> and that little sound button in there. I hope it doesn't get taken down because of it. A little bit of background music. Is the AI actually real, sir? I'm not sure how to answer that without trolling. So I'll just refrain. 
Are you impersonating Arnold Schwarzenegger or is your accent natural? Ha ha ha. Funny guy. I wish I could impersonate Arnie. Do I sound like Arnie? I don't feel like I, I do, honestly. Um, doesn't need to be in brackets. Try it. Interesting, interesting. I wish I've se I would have seen that earlier. Let's see. Did the hack get fixed? Yeah, we talked about Dan. I think it's available again. Just go on Twitter and look for Dan. You're going to find some answers. Not the topic of today's stream. Jonathan Lightfoot. Let's see what you said. When will your course be released? Also, are you going to release a version free of the chat GPT cheat sheet? Yes, the two are going to go hand in hand. So the original plan was doing the cheat sheet and then updating it for the first quarter. But I'm going to keep updating it longer for longer. Um, and there's going to be a new version of the book with more prompts and a better introductory chapter. Wait, let me full screen this. So the introductory chapter is going to be better. There's going to be more practical examples. And there's going to be a video training that comes with it that teaches you how to get more out of the book. Essentially, it's going to show you this like mother of all prompts. Partially, it's going to talk about blocks. It's going to talk about formulas. It's going to talk about applying formulas. It's going to be essentially a more structured version of what we're doing here um, with even more content. And then the course is going to be the ultimate zero to hero thing. Like my goal is taking a complete novice and leading him step by step and introducing him to how to engineer some of these prompts by yourself. That's going to be the goal. It's going to be not just showing like the, ch the cheat sheet is all about like showing you what you can do. And the course is going to be all about laying, a, laying out a map. It's, it's, it's going to be about laying out a map on how to get to a point where you can do these things yourself. Where you can like come up with new prompts and be a part of the conversation at the highest level. That's going to be the goal of the course. It's going to be structured in eight modules. There's going to be a bunch of practical examples. And... I'm going to keep adding to it all the time. I'm going to make this my, I'm going to make it my life's mission for the foreseeable time, like the next year or so to make that thing as good as possible. I think already I don't like hyperbolic statements except in titles, guys. I, I do like him in titles. Hey, I, you got to get those clicks somehow, right? It's quality content inside. So I, I, I have to admit, I do like me some clickbait, but I think I, at this point, it's about like, 70% developed right now. It's going to come out to answer your question. It's going to come out the 1st of April or 2nd of April. I don't know. I don't want to release it on like the joke day, right? But it's going to come out beginning of April. And I think right now it's looking, at the very least, it's looking like, I, I'll just say it. I think it's the best course available on the internet. It's straight up. Like, I believe that. Look, am I, might I be biased? Sure. But I think just production quality wise, there's no question. Content-wise, I failed to find another one that goes as in-depth. So that's that's an argument. And we're already working on these killer use cases, these case studies that are going to show these in practice. So for example, if I, if I show you how to generate ideas, it's not going to be like, hey, here's an idea generation prompt. Here's how to run it. Here you can copy-paste it. Here's maybe a good follow-up prompt. That's the expected, right? That's going to go a step further. This is going to be like, okay, and today we're hanging out with Jennifer. Jennifer is a social media manager for this company, and she's going to use some of the idea generation prompts we provided here. Jennifer, go ahead. And then Jennifer's going to use it. And then we're going to go ahead and help Jennifer actually implement it into the, her workflow. The focus is going to be really getting results as opposed to just giving you tutorials that you might not end up using. I think the best way to teach this, um, and you maybe picked up on that in the, in the videos that I did, is not just showing you exactly what to copy paste, but also showing you how to implement it. So I really like the practical part. So at first, it's going to be that core corpus of the modules that make a prompt engineer out of you. And then it's going to go and start, we're going to start adding use cases um, and case studies to the course. So there's going to be updates for that. And along with the course release, there's going to be update of the ebook. There's going to be a new version. So I hope that answers your question, Jonathan. Um, essentially, it's like this is kind of the sole focus of my entire existence at this point. And 
um, I went all in on creating the best like educational resources around this. Starting with YouTube, now we expand it into Instagram and TikTok. Um, the Discord server is alive and well, and we're expanding. The course is going to be kind of the magnum opus of everything, uh, where everything comes together. You, you'll get everything in one place. And yeah, that's, that's my answer. Google will try to make this tech as persuasive as possible under the umbrella, pervasive. Ooh, I purchased the ebook. Now a chat log or a doc on training ChatGPT to help with the journey is something I'll definitely pay for. Interesting, man. Dude, you just paid. I'll give it to you right here. It's like the most basic thing you want to do is um, if you go to my newsletter archive on my website, I think in the second newsletter, I had the exact prompt. So I don't know it by heart, but essentially you can ask ChatGPT to be your mid-journey prompt generator. I thought about this a lot. Um, I'm like intermediate at mid-journey. I'm no like uh, AI art god, but I think I'm, I'm quite good. But I decided not to create educational material around mid-journey just because there's so many people doing a great job around it. I looked at the ChatGPT landscape and I was like, oh, wait, there's definitely... We can, we can one-up like this on, on many levels. And that's why I'm focusing on that. I really want to like add value to this. And, I, and also, I feel like ChatGPT has more um, work. It, there's more people that could benefit from it in their work then mid-journey could help people benefit in their work. I think both are insane, but just like ChatGPT seems like the rational one. So, okay, so to, to answer your question, um, I'm not, I'm not going to be creating mid-journey products, but um, what you can do is you can use ChatGPT to be a prompt generator. And I, I would need to check the archive, but essentially it goes something like, I don't know all these prompts by heart. Like, I'm not going to kid you, but... It goes something like, um, generate me a prompt for an AI art generator, I think, um, uh, for an um, uh, and I think in my example, it was like, like a goat next to a lake, right? Uh, something like this for a goat next to a lake for an AI art generator. And if you run this, it's going to give you quite a detailed prompt. Yeah, this is not exactly it. Uh, this would work though. If you feed it into mid journey, this would work. But essentially, I think there was like another block to this um, where it gave you, where it gave you, um, keywords instead of this. And you can use ChatGPT to generate mid-journey prompts. Fantastic starting point. Fantastic starting point. Anyway, so let's see. So Daniel, welcome to the group, man. Good to have you here. We've been talking a little bit in DMs. Good to have you here. Super active in the server. Hey, it's good to see you, dude. It's good to see you. Let's see some of these. Okay, I found it. I'll share the members only Discord. Okay, perfect, man. Virtual home improvement sales, very impressed with my testing. Tips, what do you mean by virtual home improvement sales? Virtual home improvement sales. I'm not sure you would have to elaborate on that. That's, that's a little cryptic to me. When I create prompts, I initially start asking questions to get it to respond how I want it to. And then I go in and look to see where I can replace certain words with variables. That's a good approach. Yeah. Also, like, I'll tell you, the course is going to be structured in a way where it's going to be like, okay, here's basic prompts. Here's how you set up. Here's how formulas work. Here's how the building blocks work. Here's several examples. Then we're going to start messing with that. And that's going to be the first half of the course. And then we're going to go deep and show you, like, specific... I, I don't, wa don't want to reveal too much. I don't want to reveal too much. All of this is going to be... I don't want to reveal too much because other people would steal it as they did with, like, all the other content I created so far. So... The second half of, let, let me just say this, the second half of the course is going to be anybody, no matter how advanced you are, you're going to find value in there. And it's going to be very outcome and very pra practical. It's going to be very, like, it's going to be focused on real world results, I would say. I don't want to give away the exact, like, methodology that, uh, that we're going to use there to teach it, but it's, it's going to be good. And once it's live, um, beginning of April, you're going to see all of it. There's going to be a sales video. There's going to be YouTube, YouTube videos. 
and there's gonna be the whole curriculum is gonna be live and the first videos are gonna be free. Anyway, so that's that's my answer right there. Um, what else do we have here? I purchased the ebook. By the way, so I'm serious about that. What do you mean? Training chat log for mid journey and chip tips, something I'll definitely pay for. Or Docker training to help with mid journey. Okay, interesting, interesting. Any more questions here? Let's see. What is the address for your website? The only one. The one in the description is not working. Really? That's curious. You can, I think you can just go to like the, um, get my free ebook here, right? Let me try this. And then there's a menu at the top. Okay, I'll just show you guys. This is what I meant with like the, the prompt channel. I need to update the archive. Um, it's it's been actually a while. I'll do this man I do this manually. But if you go in here and if you open, if you go to, you know, um this one has a pretty easy like wait, I need to fix my URLs. I, I do all this myself, so apologies if it's not yeah, these okay. You can go to the archive. I'll just paste the link to it in the um, in the chat. And in the archive on the website, you can go to the second one here, 5th of January, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, this is it. This is it. So here, it was the prompt of the week. Generate prompts for art generators. Right, this is it. Write me a visual description of a wise goat living next to a lake, using only nouns and adjectives. There you go. There's the prompt, man. Appreciate the $10 donation. Here's the prompt that replaces the, the product that you asked for. Uh, how can I connect my Discord uh, to the YouTube membership? So what you do is you go to Discord, you go to your profile settings, the little like gear icon, right? Then in the profile settings, you, um, in the profile settings, you pick integrations and in integrations, you connect it to your YouTube and you're going to get auto assigned the role. If you go into the members area on my channel, I posted screenshots there that show you exactly. Um, so yeah, you can use that as a reference. I think you should figure it out. If not, feel free to ask, I'll help you out. But essentially you have to connect your Discord account to your YouTube account and then you get the, uh, the role. Um, Thank you. Do you have a Discord that I can send the results to? Daniel, have you? Um, Skyblocks Block Labs. I have seen that actually. Wait, I have it. Wait, wait, wait. I need to hide my screen because I, I have it in my bookmarks. One second here. Boom, boom. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. AI tools. There you go. This, huh? This is incredible stuff. Yeah, yeah I, I've seen this. Um, I ran into it yesterday or two days ago. It's quite cool. You could be like um, waterfall in the desert at sunset. And you could be like, okay, make it, make it sci-fi and generate. Yeah, it's, it's a really cool app. Good suggestion, man. You can go get this at skybox.blockadelabs.com. Just a little fun, fun little app. It's generating it right now. Oh, thank you for taking the time. I'll definitely keep you on top of my creators. Thank you, Winfield. I appreciate that. Hey, this is the second that oh man, this is the second donation. Dude, you're too generous. This is so cool. I never received like a donation before in my life. Everybody always, everybody just always asks for money. Nobody gives you money, right? Anybody can relate. <laughs> anyway, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I should be streaming more, huh? This is fun. Like, we get to hang out. We get to talk. We get to talk about AI. Like, this is great. We're going to be doing this every Monday, by the way. Every Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. What website is this? It's Skybox. Wait, I'm covering it up. My bad. So this is like a desert waterfall in a sci-fi style. It's kind of cool, huh? Look at that. 
Now let's generate it in a surreal style. No, maybe maybe enough as a fantasy landscape. It's just a cool. It's just a cool page. I hope that um, prompt helped you out, Winsfield. I'm trying to make a workflow to convert this image to an actual 3D model. Random bleach fan. First of all, shout out to random bleach fan. What a great name. <laughs> I'll post the link to this in the in the chat. This is kind of a, it's a kind of a neat app. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that'd be super cool if you could like just generate this and then put on a VR headset and be in there. But I mean, how would you? How would you handle the depth in here? Would you like auto generate? Ooh, look at this is more like what I imagined here. <gasps> look at that. If this was VR and you could walk around it, man, imagine you just say like, oh my God, it's gonna be so sick one day. Apple Glass is supposed to come out next month or is that a rumor? I would love that. Anyway, um, imagine like you have a headset on and you're just like, oh, like a waterfall in a desert at sunset. And then it just generates this and you get to walk around with it. I mean, hell, we have all the building blocks, right? It just needs to get better. This is really cool. Look at this. Pretty cool stuff. It's a good, good backdrop, actually. How do we get the material? What do you mean by the material, my man? Like the material, like of the different materials here, like the textures? Um, let me see if I can find the website. There are websites that can take images and generate depth depth maps from it. Okay. Interesting. So I'm a, I'm a super noob at game design. I dove into Unity for like six weeks straight, created like three YouTube videos around me learning it and never uploaded them. But it was a fun little experiment. And I, yeah, essentially I learned about the basics, you know, like textures, depth maps, depth depth map depth maps hard word and i set up like you know my my player character and the most advanced thing i did is like play around with shaders for water that was yay and i and i have no idea how to code in uh c sharp all i know is a bit of python to automate the mundane tasks that content creation throws at you Anyway, Ahmed, welcome to the members club, dude. Good to have you here. What you're able to do now is you're, you're able to like open up the Discord and then you can link your, you can link your, uh, your YouTube profile and you're going to get a special role that is going to be, it's going to give you access to a members only room. Hey man, good to have you here. Thanks for joining. Ooh, speechless. Holy moly. Holy moly, this dude posted, this dude posted quite the sick prompt in here. Wait, let me, let me read this. In the members area in the Discord. So he donated, he joined, and he provided a bunch of value. Guys, this is how it's done. Shout out Speechless. Good job, man. So he used the mother of all prompts to... Oh, this is really funny. This is really funny. Give me ideas on how to write me hypothetical dialogue between Peter and Homer. <laughs> and then it goes on. That's cool. And he posted the outputs. That's really cool. Guys, this is what I secretly hope is going to happen with the Discord community. I want all you guys to become like a mad scientist, mad prompt engineers. And you're just going to go ahead and you're going to like explore all this right and i only have so many hours in a day and i hope the members area is going to turn into something where we all experiment together share screenshots of how we did it what the results are and then learn from each other and then you know we're kind of going to be like a secret clan of advanced prompt engineers and whenever these new apps come out we're going to get to explore them together we're going to do members only live streams where failure is not just accepted but embraced it's kind of my goal because here you know it's still i i kind of i want to make this work i want to make this a worthy tutorial and all that 
but I want to do these members only live streams where it's like, hey, let's break it and let's run into walls and let's end the stream on like a note where it's like, okay, we don't know how to figure it out, whatever, let's move on. Here, I, I'm more like, I want to give you results. But in the members area, it's like, okay, let's try new stuff, fail while doing it. Maybe someone else is going to figure it out. Who knows? That's the, you know, power of community. So that's that's kind of my goal there. So we'll, we'll see. This is all super fresh, right? Um, it's kind of month one of the membership. So, yeah. It's really cool. I, I enjoy the... I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, as in the chat, great prompt usage right there. It's really cool. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys are going to, like, explore and share your findings. At the very least, just hop into Discord and leave, and leave some of your ideas. Yeah. Okay, cool. Any any more questions? How do we get the PDF on prompts? Um, you go to the description of this video. You follow, get my free ebook here. I'll post it in the description. And you just sign up for my weekly newsletter and you'll get an email. You should get an email. <laughs> That's like an 80% chance you'll get an email. Otherwise, you'll get a follow-up in an hour. Um, yeah. I'm willing to bet your teacher knows next to nothing about AI. My teacher said AI just makes us stupid. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's there. I think there's validity to that claim. Just like there is validity to saying, you know, having Google makes you stupid. But at the end of the day, I think it's a it's a bad take overall, if I had to judge it. I think it's a bad take because. You know, being stupid makes you stupid. Not your environment. Like, humans are really good at adapting to the environment. And we've always adjusted to everything that was thrown at us. And I think at the end of the day, if, you're, if you want to be stupid, you're going to be stupid. If you want to cheat on every single exam and you want to get through life without putting in any effort effort you know you're going to you're going to find a way to do that and you but you're also going to reap the benefits or the consequences of that rather so i think people that want to put in zero effort are going to put in zero effort is this another tool that helps them with that sure of course but the stuff i've seen in school and university the the lengths that people go to just to cheat, often it's more effort than the studying it itself, right? And I think people that want to do that always have done that and will keep doing that. And the ones that want to put in the effort, like everybody in this chat is like obviously interested on how to make more out of this tech, right? Might some people in here use it to cheat on their exams or like their assignments? Sure, but that doesn't automatically make them worse people, I think. I think at the end of the day, it's, it's a mindset thing and, it, and it's like the way you approach it. It's the way you approach it. If you approach it like, oh, I'm going to get to save time and play more video games. Like, sure, that's one type of person. And that's fine too. But I think at the end of the day, I, I'm confident in saying that most people in here are here to learn about this and actually to use it to their advantage, to level up themselves. And then eventually their surrounding too. And I think that's, that's a healthy approach. And to the teacher, I would say, first of all, I would ask if he even tried using it. And I was like, eh, I tried with it. He would give you like some ignorant answer. And uh, then I would go on to bring up examples of, if, if you actually wanted to have the discussion, right? That's a good initial question. Then I would go on to have a discussion around if any other of these technologies, like smartphones, like Google, like, those are great examples right there made people more stupid did emails make people more stupid just because it's a more efficient way of sending messages oh you know the death of handwriting oh people are gonna forget how to write you have keyboards now oh is this a little more extreme than than emails yes sure of course yes it's kind of like an artificial brain right it's crazy but at the end of the day i think stupid people are gonna be stupid and the people that want to put in the effort and want to excel at what they do, um, which, by the way, is in the end is always worth it, they will do just that. 
Um, so yeah, it's gonna it's gonna just enforce that gap. It's gonna be even easier to cheat now. But at the end of the day, um, I choose to be optimistic about these things because I can. I can. I get the choice. And I'm gonna make the best of it and I'm gonna help others make the best of it. And that take of like, oh, this is gonna make people stupid, it's just useless. It's just useless. I'm sorry. It's like, what? What? Okay. What now? You know? So that's, I don't know. That's what I think about that. <laughs> yeah. Getting the answer straight to question without learning it makes people stupid. Hmm. So do you think like, interesting, I, I think you have a point there, random bleach fan. I think, I think you have a point there. But at the end of the day, like the prompts that we ran today, right? Like the example generator, the mother of all prompts. That's a use case that you could have never achieved with a conventional search engine, right? And yes, you're going to get some of those where it's like, oh, just get the answer. Like you're not even going to have to think. But on the other hand, you're going to get some insane applications that you have never seen before and that were never able to be done before. So it's a double-edged sword. And I personally, like at least for myself, I can only speak for myself, right? I feel like it opened up a whole new world and it made my creativity go into places that it never went to before because of AI. So I don't know. Is it making me stupid? I certainly don't think so. Um, and also, by the way, like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Might as well adjust, huh? Might as well adjust instead of being just salty and and all that. Anyway, enough, enough on that topic. Um, kind of like saying using a hammer makes you weak. Anchor, thank you. <laughs> no, that's a great, you know, exactly. Kind of like saying using a hammer makes you weak. I love that. I'm, wow, that's a really good, that's a really good analogy. Thanks. You need a more catchy name for Moab, mother of all prompts. <laughs> Dude, Fenris, that's, that, okay, that's cool. Is it like the Moab, Moab from um, Call of Duty, I believe, right? And which it, I think that's the most popular franchise it got featured in, right? The mother of all bombs. The Moab. That's cool. Should I add that? Can't beat him, join him, yeah. Skills needed yesterday will not be the skills needed tomorrow. I, I remember when the use of PCs was forbidden in school. Yeah, man, same. And like up to the age of 14, we weren't allowed to use calculators. And I think there's wisdom to that, you know? I'm still able if you're like... Nine times seven, it's like 63, right? <laughs> it's just it, like that's, that stuff sticks with you. And I think it's it's good that it stuck with me. So that's, that's a good, it's a good skill to have, by the way. Okay. Um, ah, for the depth, you left a comment about the depth map. Let's see. Leia picks convert. Ah, I heard that. I heard that before. This rings a bell. Just drag and drop on images and it will generate a depth version from the image for free. That's really cool. Yeah. I th That's so cool. I mean, uh, I honestly, like one of my secret wishes right now is just being able to put down the laptop, put down the social media for like a month, just like close myself in a room and improve at Python. Honestly, I would just love to go, like if you have the possibility, maybe if you don't have a job or you're in between jobs or you have like time next to uni, I feel like that's gonna be one of the, that's a fantastic skill to play around with currently in the current world and in the upcoming world. Automation paired with like a GPT-like API, it's just, oh, that pairing is just so, it's so good. It's such a valuable skill set. I would love to get better at that. My Python skills are like, they're like maybe a three out of 10. Like I, I, I know basic stuff with ChatGPT. I guess I know like intermediate stuff now, but I'm no wizard and I would, and I would like to develop my skills in that area. 
Anyway, I guess content creation is my forte. This is a really cool, cool image. Anyway, okay. Move on. Okay, so I think uh, we're going to take a last round of questions. <laughs> Dude, I actually really like your idea. We're going to do that. Let's update... Let's update um, the video's name, the mother of all prompts, the Moab. <laughs> I think that's going to stick. We can make it stick, huh? The Moab. I like that. I found the mother of all prompts. <laughs> Let's do this. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Hey, hey, look, I take your... This is this is living proof that I take your guys' suggestions uh, seriously. I'm going to do this, the Moab. I found the mother of all prompts, Moab. Should I make this adjustment? What are you guys think? You know what? Like, is this a good name? We're going to do a little poll before we end this here. Should I call it the Moab? <laughs> yes. Or no. Okay. The poll is in chat, you guys. You get to vote. Should I call this the Moab? Whatever, guys, you decide, we're going to make the adjustment to the YouTube title. 100% yes. 80% yes. Okay, let's see. Take your vote. <laughs> That's cool. Prompt me toys. That's cool. Also, prompt guru is another good one I ran into. Oh, man. Somebody's always like, oh, man, you're like a prompt guru. I'm like, whoa, that sounds, I like the sound of that. Oh, by the way, you guys, everyone that is here right now, I've been told by many people to do this more. I'm supposed to ask you to like this live stream. So if you, you know, if you could take like half a second out of your day and hit that like button, it would be much appreciated. I've heard that it apparently it really helps. Apparently it really helps. And everybody else asks for it. So by not asking for it, it's just like, just like refraining from using clickbait. You just shoot yourself in the knee. In both knees, and then you try to run a marathon because that's what YouTube is. You can't do that. You need to. So, please, if you enjoy this content, if you enjoy the Q&A, leave a like. I would appreciate that. Did you start with the Moab? It's actually, it's actually kind of sticky. Did you use the Moab for that? That's good. Okay, dude, 88%. Five more seconds. I think this is quite clear. You guys, you guys are feeling this. It's the Moab. I found the mother of all prompts. All right, all right. It is what it is. Let's do it. The Moab, and this very second, the Moab has been officially coined. It's the Moab. It's the mother of all prompts. There you go. 89%. You guys believe in this. Okay, let's do this. It's called the Moab. <laughs> that's funny. All right, we did this. Okay, so that's it. I think this was a very informative live stream. I'll quickly recap. We went for the Moab, the mother of all prompts. Oh yeah, this is sticky. Let's do it. <laughs> then we went. Then we went. Then we moved on, and we showed you it in action. We ran into some troubles, and I showed you how to troubleshoot it. Luckily, for and for like educational purposes. It didn't work, not even when I tried to troubleshoot it. So then we had to take a completely different route to get around the problem and to, to attack it from a different angle, and that worked. Then I showed you how to use the prompt to generate ideas. We went for a bunch of questions. I showed you how to prompt, how to use ChatGPT to generate better mid-journey prompts. We looked at some, at some incredibly cool apps, just like this one right here. We had a bunch of questions. We had a bunch of people join the members club. Feel free to do that. It's free 99 a month. And you get uh, a members only Discord room. A bunch of people joined there. The chat is alive and well. Well, I actually have to read that. It's even more active than the, than the stream chat. Wow. And it's just how many people? Four people are online right now. That's not much. So if you want to get into this club, you can. Just join the YouTube membership. I announced uh, the development of the course. The thing is about 70% done. Uh, you're going to hear, hear more about it throughout the next month. And all I can do right now is say thank you so much for joining me on this live stream. Thank you so much. And slowly but surely, we're going to fade this thing out. And 
I'm gonna wish you a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. And you know what it is. You're gonna see me every Monday on here, on this YouTube channel. We're gonna go through different prompts. Explore together. If you wanna do that before, join the membership. Thank you so much for joining. And that's it. The Moab has been coined, ladies and gentlemen. I'll hang out. We'll hang out in Discord for a bit. So feel free to come into the Discord. I think I'm just going to switch on over to the voice channel there for a bit. We're going to have a little hangout session there. Super casual. Thank you so much for joining us today. How often do I stream? I just started streaming once a week, every Monday. You might just do more, but that's the fixed schedule. Every Monday at this time, you're going to find me here. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good one. How do I connect Discord to YouTube? Um, I think I can show you. So, okay, I have streamer mode enabled for safety reasons, but just check it out. Like, if you go to your settings, it's here. It's connections, and then you add the YouTube connection. That's what you do. And then you get the role. You can go into the members area on the channel, and there's going to be a description. Too. All right, guys. Have a good one. Have a great day. Thanks for joining.